Hi guys, okay, today we are cooking scones. Um, there are a number of different varieties you can uh, do with scones, as I'm going to show you, but there are two different recipes there. So you've got a basic recipe, which is at the top, and then we just add certain things to make them into cheese scones, or you can add things like sultanas, raisins, and make them into sweet scones that you put jam and cream on. So they're a savoury and sweet type of scones. And just for a few extra ideas, there are some of the ideas. But if you do a Google search, you'll get loads and loads of different ideas for scones. Never tried the bacon and cheese ones or the Mediterranean ones, but they sound yummy. Okay, so we always need to remember our hygiene, don't we, when we're cooking? So if you've got long hair, make sure you tie that back. Nobody wants a scone with a really long hair in, do they? And we're going to wash our hands as well. I'm sure you've probably already done that. I'm just going to tie that up. Really get into all the nooks and crannies there. And a bit of warm water. No jewellery. You don't want to be losing that in the flour in your butter. And also, if I was at school, I'd be telling you if you've got gel, gel nail polish on, you probably need to be wearing gloves. So I'm going to put, pop some gloves on and then we'll make a start. So the first thing you need to do, and just remember if you are struggling to do any of this, uh, make sure you get an adult to help you. We don't want anyone getting hurt, grating your fingers and bleeding, etc. Um, and just make sure that you have got permission and there's someone around because I don't want anyone burning the house down because you've forgotten to leave the oven on and things like that. All right, so we're going to start by, we've got, I've got all of my ingredients together just because it makes life a lot easier. Um, pause. What did a close up of all my ingredients? Um, we've got some ready, made, uh, ready, ready grated cheese. Just about to measure out the flour, it just makes life a lot easier for you. Everything's to hand. Okay, um, so the first thing you need to do is weigh out the flour. I believe that's 225 grams. So I've started to do that to make it a lot quicker. Get more. Whoops, making a mess always clean that up later on. Okay, this doesn't have to be exact because once you start to make your dough, come a bit closer, just make sure you've got all of this. Okay, so there's my flour. This is going to be my mixing bowl. So I'm going to put that in there and then we just need a bit of a, a pinch of salt. I got the wrong one last time. That's kind of optional, it's not going to taste that much different if you uh, don't put your, your salt in. And just get rid of any big lumps there. Okay, so the next thing is to rub in the butter. Now some of you might struggle with this a little bit. Um, I'll just get my butter, pause. Got my butter. Um, this has been pre-chilled. I've even put this in the freezer um, only for about 10 minutes to make it really cold and it just makes it easier to rub into your flour because you're kind of going to rub it in like that. Um, it's quite a good skill to learn and you'd be learning this probably in year seven actually. I think you cook scones. Uh, so you need to rub all of that in to your flour. Okay. So just like that, all the way through the mixture. Okay, so just kind of rub it all together at this point. Once you've rubbed all that butter in, we're just kind of rubbing it all in like that. And it should kind of be 
little bit like breadcrumbs, I suppose, very light breadcrumbs. And I reckon that's pretty much done. Okay, so now we're just going to crack our egg into there. If you think you are going to get shell in, maybe do it into another um, bowl before you do that. I'm going to give it a whirl. I'm going to crack that in. There we are. That can go in the composter. And then you kind of just need to mix that in. And then we're going to add some milk. So the kind of consistency that you're looking for here is like a dough so just to make sure that you don't add too much milk maybe do a little bit at a time and then see how you go okay so that's starting to stick together now like a proper dough i'm probably going to need a little bit more milk so again try to do this very gently don't add too much just a little bit and again try to bind it all together you can even get your hands in there if you want to at some point it might make life a lot easier for you i reckon we just need a bit more just to bind it all together there and we're almost ready Okay, I'm going to get my hands in and see how it feels and it should all start sticking together. If it isn't, you're going to need a little bit more milk, which I think I possibly do. It's almost there, but I need a little bit more milk. Okay, so as you can see, um, I've managed to add as much milk as I need to. I've kind of got that all into a nice ball now okay so i'm going to show you how to do both types of scones so i'm going to separate my mixture into kind of half there we go so we'll have this one and we will make some this one can be the sweet scone should we do that first i've already pre-weighed my caster sugar out so you probably need probably about 20 odd grams of that just going to chuck it in and then we'll knead that in okay so you may need to do that for a while to make sure it's all gone through you probably would do this earlier on if you are um, just making sweet scones it might be better to do earlier on um, but because i'm trying to make both now is the best time to do this pause okay so um, we're mixing our sugar in there and also we've got a few these are optional if you don't like sultanas or raisins you don't have to add them i've got a few of them in though because i like them there we go that'll do and then you're literally just kneading all that in mixing all that in it might take you a few minutes to do this try and just make sure that all the um raisins are kind of evenly distributed throughout the whole mixture and if you need to add any more milk then you can do if it's getting a little bit wet then you what you might want to do is just add a little bit of extra flour just to dry that up a little bit okay okay so that is my dough that's ready for the sultana um scone so i'm just going to put that to one side while we um, sort out our cheese scones. So again, I've already weighed, uh, already weighed out about 100 grams of cheese, but obviously if you want more cheese, add it in, why not? Okay, so we're gonna do that. Um, I would just, you know, you know how to grate, I'm sure. Just be careful, this is where you could hurt yourself because if you get too close to the grater, you're gonna hurt your fingers. So just do that really slowly, very gently. And again, if, there's, if there is anything that you're struggling with, then make sure you get an adult to come and help you. Okay, so again, just like we did before, um, we're gonna mix, and mix all of that dough together. These again are optional. In a couple of the recipes that I've seen, you can add cayenne pepper. So I'm gonna chuck a couple of uh, 
dashes of that in and you can even add mustard not many people like mustard i don't think not as children anyway so we're just going to add a tiny bit of that Ooh, not much of that left and we're just going to mix all that in again if it starts to feel a little bit wet just add a little bit of flour in to make it dry up again but again you're just mixing all of that together it might take you a couple of minutes make sure all the cheese is in, uh, sort of all the way through the mixture and all the mustard etc so give it a right good knead i think is the right word for us okay so we've got our cheese mixture ready we've got our raisin mixture ready um I'm going to show you how to do one and then hopefully you'll be able to do them both and then we're going to put them in the oven so on a floured surface we just kind of drop our flour on there and that just helps our dough not stick to the surface when we roll it you can even this is what my mum used to do and my mama you can flour your uh, rolling pin as well okay so roll it out until it's roughly about a centimeter depth doesn't matter if you haven't got one of these you'll just have to kind of make a little bit of a ball mixture with each one there we go that's one so once you've done all of these i'll show you what to do with one of them i've got my uh baking tray already ready over here so I've cut out some baking parchment um, and I'm going to stick that on there and then we'll do that for the rest of them. Okay, so my husband has actually just uh, remembered something he learned at school. Um, and if you haven't got any of these, what you can use is a last. Now I've just trialled this and it did actually work. So I'm really impressed by that. There we go. How easy is that? It's probably easier than the actual cutter. Perfect size. So I'm doing the cheese ones now. And finally, so I've got a little bit of egg in there. I'm just going to pop a little bit more um, milk in there. Just mix it up with a paintbrush, actually. It doesn't really matter if you've not got a paintbrush. You can use your fingers for this. Uh, but if you do have some kind of brush, we like to uh, brush the top. And this just makes them really nice and golden brown when they're cooking. Okay, so I'm just uh, finishing the cheese ones off by sprinkling a little bit of cheese on there on, to eat, on the top of each one of those. A little bit of leftover cheese. literally can't wait to try one of these and they are nice if you have them warm maybe not as soon as they come out of the oven but right so off they go into the oven it's probably best to put them in the center I've got a fan oven, so I'm going to put it on 200 degrees. Um, for a normal oven, it will probably be about 220. But just keep an eye on them. Um, they should be done in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, I think they're ready, so we're going to take them out. Oh, they look lovely. Okay, so that's the finished article. And if you want to make them again, there's the instructions. Thank you for watching. And uh, thank you for to Mr. Darrington for being the person who has done the video for me. This is Miss Law, who normally works at the Holgate Academy.